Good morning, Achoja Warriors. I am always excited. Happy Friday to you guys. Hoping that you're having a great morning as we get ready for another mindset moment. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite motivational speakers, someone that I listened to and quoted without really knowing that I was quoting him, and that is Les Brown. So, Les Brown, he's actually from Florida, just like me, but he was born down in Miami. And he, if you've heard him, he's he's just charismatic and he he always just, I don't really know how to word it, but it's if you're just having one of those days, if you listen to him, you just feel really good. And I think it's important that when we're talking about restoring black wealth, we're talking about building wealth in the community, investing in the community, that you have to really understand that there is a variety of options available to you. You just have to be comfortable investing one in yourself and then as we say in the Achoja lifestyle you, you got to be willing to put in the work on a daily consistent basis that brings you one step closer each day to your goal i remember just growing up as a kid and i don't know where the the message came from but i used to have inside of me this message that said from the bottom to the top and it would literally just resonate inside of me all the time and i always felt like things were just going to work out because I genuinely believe that no matter where I started, that I was going to end in a great place. And so Les Brown, if you've ever listened to him, he has a lot of different stories. But he's, if you're not familiar, he was actually was abandoned as a baby. His, his mom gave birth to twins in an abandoned building and then had given them up for adoption. And so Les talks about his, his adopted mom and how she had several uh, kids and different interactions that they've all had. But she really encouraged them to, to focus on getting ed education, providing for themselves, and really trying to create a life that they couldn't necessarily have on their own. And less talks where, where some of the times we talk about how the parents play such a pivotal role in the, the younger person becoming the successful person that they grow up to be. See, Les didn't quite have that same support. And so his person ended up being one of the teachers at his school. And he talks about how when he was in elementary school, he was held back a grade. And because of that, he was he was uh, declared mentally retarded. And so he grew up and he accepted that, that belief. He accepted that perception of him, even though that was someone else's perception. And so whenever he would be asked to do something, he would explain to people, well, you know, you can't ask that of me. I'm, I'm mentally retarded. Or that doesn't really, you know, jive for what I'm able to do. You must not, you must not have heard I'm mentally retarded where he is projecting this this belief out and he's confirming it because of the standard that he has now set for himself based on one person's opinion from his childhood and so now you fast forward now les meets this other this teacher and les gives the same line where he's like hey i'm mentally retarded you can't ask this to me i'm not in your class and the teacher just basically told him exactly how it was he's like look man just because someone else says this about you doesn't make it so you don't need to allow someone else's thoughts to infiltrate your mind and impact your behavior. And Les said, because that, that teacher believed in him, because that teacher did not allow him to, to pass that same excuse that he has used for so long, that he was able to rise to the challenge, that he was able to raise the standards, his expectations for himself, and to really go out and take and just take advantage of his abilities. And so now with his newfound understanding, Les is now in a mindset where he's like, okay, well, I guess I can really do anything. You know, like this is just the door was creaked open and it was like he was just waiting for someone to just let him know, Les, it's okay. You are inefficient. You are inadequate. You aren't missing anything. And it's important for us to kind of keep that in mind. I was actually talking to my wife about this uh, yesterday. I, I heard a speaker and, and she put it in a very interesting way. And she said, if someone walked up to you right now and said, hey, your hair is purple and I don't like it. If your hair is not purple, then, then it wouldn't impact you, right? Like you'd be like, oh, look, my hair is not purple, right? You would, you would not accept that. You would reject that. You, dare I say, you would judge them off of that statement. You would be like, what's, what's wrong with you? Can you not see that that's, you're not describing me? But now if someone instead came up to you and said, oh, I, I don't like you because you're lazy or, or, or I think you're selfish or, or some of these other descriptions that are a little bit more internally where it's not as obvious and as clear for us to be able to say well that doesn't describe me are you confused instead we'll sit there and if we think long enough we'll be like well i guess i guess i was selfish that one time i, I guess i i could have put in more effort that other time 
where now you've accepted and you've allowed that to become a part of you. It's important that when you are striving towards chasing happiness, when you are living and chasing that inner drumbeat inside of you, that there are going to be people who doubt you verbally, but it doesn't mean that you have to accept it internally. You have to be able to look at someone the same way in the same confidence that you would look at someone who says, hey, I don't like your purple hair. You can look back at them and say, my hair is not purple and I don't care what you like. But instead, when it's something that we're not 100% sure about, something that's a little bit more subjective, we allow ourselves to, to hold on to it. And that's what Les did. And that's what a lot of people do. And it ends up holding you back for your entire life because you just keep repeating it. And as long as other people accept that, then it's just going to keep furthering and, and handicapping you. See, if Les never met the person that told him, Les, that doesn't have to be your reality, then he never would have realized the greatness that was inside of him. And so if you guys need that, let me be that person today. If you need someone to tell you that you can do it, if you're willing to put in the work to do it, if you're willing to hone your craft and, and as I say, become your better self so you can create the better world, let me be that person. You have the abilities inside of you. You've always had them inside of you. And simply because someone at some point told you it was a bad idea and because they judged you, believe me when I tell you that more often than not, they are judging themselves. They are projecting their own fears, their own self-doubts out onto you. Do not allow for one more moment for them to rent space in your mind. If you want to be a singer and someone told you when you're a kid that, that like I do with my sister, I'd be like, who sang that song? And she would tell me, I'd be like, let's keep it that way. Right, like I, I mean, we were just being silly. We were just repeating stuff. But if something like that happened and they were serious and you never sang again, go ahead and start singing. If you sang long enough, I promise you, you'd have been the best singer in the world. That's just, that's just how practice and honing our skills works. The mistake most of us make is we believe failure is a sign that we should stop or it's not for us. But more often than not, it just means that we're not there yet. And if you're not there yet, that means that you can't get there. What is difficult is not impossible. But we often act like it is, and it makes it impossible to change your life if you are not willing to take action that is contrary to the action that you have, that you have taken thus far in your life. And so Les, he talks about when he left Miami, he went to Ohio, and he, um, after kind of training as a DJ, he tells a story about how he would go and visit the DJ studio and uh, the radio station, and he would sit there, and he would just listen, and he would just kind of like help out. And then one day he went to work and the person who normally had the spot was sick. So they had to call out and they couldn't find anyone else. So they just said, Les, could you do this? And now Les, by this time, had already been rejected like several times by this radio station. So when he had his moment, he said he was ready. He said he had his whole intro prepared and he shared that and he enjoyed it. He called up all of his friends and family and he said, I'm on the radio station. Turn to this channel. Listen to me. And he said it was just a great experience. And it shows that the, the need for perseverance, that you're going to be told no along the way, that things are going to be difficult. But if you stick with it, you'll find that that luck thing, which is just really more like persistence and momentum. And then you, you see it physically, but it's already you've been planting the seeds, you've been watering them, you've been nurturing them. And you just haven't seen anything produce yet. When it produces, everybody's like, oh, you got lucky. And Les was like, no, buddy, I've been coming here every day doing different odds and ends so that I knew all this stuff so that they knew to reach out to me if this day happened, right? And so it is what we confuse for luck is, is really opportunity that you were prepared to take advantage of. So lucky in that sense, maybe because the opportunity prepared itself, but in reality, it's more that you were preparing, that you're putting in the work and then you put in all the effort up front and the investment up front, and then you get paid on it. You find that you're going to be rewarded and compensated based on the harvest that you put in, right? You reap what you sow. And so there, when we say that people are lucky or people are doing this and that, it just means that we don't understand everything that they did. But at the end of it, they did invest enough to reap what they sow. Right, and so Les was able to take advantage of that. And then from that position, he was able to get another radio station spot out in Ohio. And he was started getting involved in his community where he's doing activism. And he was really trying to help the inner city, where he was trying to help the black community, where he was he was opening a community center. He was going to speak at schools. He was really putting a lot of his time, effort, and money in. And then naturally someone was like, you should, you should probably run for politics, right? Because you you really care about the people. And so he did, and he was able to serve in the House of Representatives for uh, several years in the state of Ohio. And it said that he had passed the most bills of any freshman 
uh, representative ever in the state of Ohio. So kudos to that, creating the change that, that he was expected he promised to make. And, but he had to end up stepping down, he said, because his mom started getting sick. So he had to move back to Florida to take care of his mom. And so he was able to continue with the activism, continue with the community involvement there. And then he was able to start educating and creating this this institution to start giving people an opportunity because most of the time, as we said, opportunity is um, seen as luck by those who are unprepared and it's seen as opportunity by those who have invested and prepared for it. So Les wanted to make sure that when these kids had their opportunity, that they were prepared for it because the opportunity is going to come and it's not like, oh, you missed your one opportunity. You'll get multiple ones, but why wait? Why wait another five, 10 years when if you catch the moment and you're ready for it, that you can capitalize on it right then. And so Les was able to invest back in the community and he was able to continue to help. And he, he still helps to this day with his, his charities and his organizations. And it's just, it really shows the, just the maturation of someone who was seen as, as mentally retarded where it's held back a grade in elementary school to someone telling him that doesn't have to be you if you don't allow it to be. To now, he's one of, considered one of the greatest motivational speakers where he's, he's received awards and accolades from Toastmasters he's in all sorts of different organizations because of just how impactful uh, his voice is and his delivery is and his belief in others are. I think he even said he won, he won an Emmy and that he was able to, to raise a lot of money for PPS. I mean, he just did so much. He was a very giving person. And you find that whenever you make it, you, you got to give back to your community. You want to help to change a part of it. And again, if everybody changes the city that they grew up in, then the whole then the whole country is different, right? Like, don't get so caught up in, if I just fix one, that's not going to help everybody. I'm trying to change the world. You save one life at a time and you end up saving everybody. But you got to save one. Let's save one life at a time. So now if you're curious, is his estimated net, net worth from his speaking career, from the influence that he's created, is estimated at around $12 million. That's around what his net worth is estimated at. And so you'll continue to find, as I am always telling you guys, the value that you create in the world will directly be related to the amount of income that you generate. So someone who has spoken to thousands and thousands and thousands of people and have touched lives and have helped people, then you, then you shouldn't be surprised if that person has generated millions of dollars because they've helped that many people. And, and again, as we often discuss, there is a point in your life where you understand the craft, you hone your skills, and then you're able to take it to the next level. So Les went from TV, and then he, he did that for a few years, and then he was able to become his own disc jockey. And then he did that for a few years, and he was able to transition into television. He did that for a little bit, and his communication skills helped him to create his own company, where now he, he you know he's speaking, he's doing seminars, he's doing presentations, where he is able to continue growing and expanding. But you'll find that before we diversify, we have to figure out the lane that we're in. So, and then when you become a mile deep and an inch wide, that's when you can start spreading out further. So Les, even though he was in communications, he spent a lot of time in radio before he moved into the other sectors of communication. But he did expand and diversify his overall income streams where he's able to create income from courses, from CDs and DVDs and from speakings and trainings and other institutions that he's that he's been able to create but you got to start with a very singular track right and i would have you think of it like like dominoes or dunkin donuts so right when you first open duncan is just offering donuts then after they mastered that they added all the other options where you can get the sandwiches and all that stuff same with dominoes when they first started they just offered pizza then once they mastered that then you can add the wings and you can add the pasta sauce too many people are looking at the finished result and then saying Okay, well, that means I need to open a pizza place that has pasta and chicken and desserts. Well, well, no. Let's let's first establish ourselves, and then we diversify in ways that complement what we have. But you'll see that whether you do that internally at your organization or externally in your own company, you're going to want to make sure that you have that that focus, that that in the zone moment, because you're only going to be able to recognize so many opportunities. So you want to make sure that you recognize the ones that provide you the most value, or as we would say, the 80-20. 20% 20. 20 of your actions, 20% of your actions are going to create 80% of your results. And the 80% of your actions are going to create 20% of your results. If you are able to just magnify that 20%, 
then you could have where the majority of your result, the majority of your time is spent getting you the 20% of your results. And that's how you scale. That's how you maximize. That's how you create generational wealth. And so that'll be a mindset moment. I want to say, of course, happy birthday to Les. His birthday is actually on the 17th, so it was in 10 days. I thought about waiting until the 17th, but I just really was excited to, to talk about Les. I'm, I'm definitely a fan of his, his work, and I look forward to meeting him in the future. So always thank you for our time. Until next time, continue blessings on your journey to become the champion of your dream life. And as always, better self, better wealth.